Well, the Senate I walked into in 1967 was still a Senate populated in large measure by the the grand earls and dukes. You know, we had Dirksen, you had Mansfield, you had uh, uh, so many of the ones who had gone before and made such a mark for themselves, Fulbright, uh, in, in so many ways. And I approached the matter as the youngest member of the Senate at that time and the second most junior person in the Senate. Mark Hatfield, by the way, was number 100, I was set, and I was uh, 99. And the reason was Mark stayed back for two days to, continue, to, com to complete his term as governor. So I jumped him by one by one term. <laughs> Until this day, we refer to each other as 99 and 100. But, uh, it, I, I stood in awe of these people who've been there so long, and uh, in looking back on it, honestly, I must tell you that th that has a retarding effect on a new senator's ability to jump into the mainstream. I think that's probably less so now, but it was certainly so then, and I was pretty reverential and respectful. And I remember when I made, if I may, I remember when I made my maiden speech on the floor of the Senate, which all freshmen are destined to do, that I went there fully prepared, excessively prepared, carefully prepared, and uh, not a soul on the floor except uh, one Democrat and my father-in-law, Senator Dirksen, who was Republican leader, and he was there out of curiosity, I think. But I spoke for... 40 minutes. And when I finished and sat down, <laughs> Dirksen came over and sat down beside me in his careful and methodical and deliberate way. There's that wonderful resident voice as Howard. Perhaps in the future you should guard against speaking more clearly than you think. <laughs> and that was my introduction into the Senate. That was the hazing. That was the, uh, uh, of new members in the Senate.